Okay, seniors, um, I've been receiving emails from many of you and uh, decided to do a quick screencast about the selection process and uh, to, to walk you through some of the recommendations if you couldn't attend the meetings. Um, if you need the application, you can go to the department heads that I'm going to refer to you and they can give you an application or else you can come see me, uh, Mr. Jensen, in room 2608. So with that, let me go through this slideshow. This is what was done at those two meetings. And again, come see me if you'd like to. So there are 14 different categories. And as you are looking at this, what I would recommend you do is select two or three categories that you would like to try out for. If you do more than that, you're risking not turning in a good application. You do less than that, I don't know, there might be a chance where you might be better in one category than the other. Now that doesn't mean you have to apply for multiple, it's just a recommendation. Um, some of you might feel comfortable with four, but I would recommend as a rule of thumb, kind of two to three. So here are the different categories. And as we look at these, I want you to write down the name of the person that you're going to be contacting. So for English, this is um, expertise in English. You're going to talk to Mrs. Toller or else you can go uh, see Mr. Haslam. He is also helping. In mathematics, you're going to go talk to Mrs. Nelson. For social studies, you're going to talk to Mrs. Catton. For science, you're going to talk to Mrs. Johnson or Mrs. Jenkins. Okay, or sorry, Mr. Johnson or Mrs. Jenkins. Now, the reason Mrs. Jenkins is if you are interested in going into the medical field. Okay, medical field, you're kind of in a, a, a mixed group. Yes, you're yes, you're in the science, but you're also going to be in CTE. So, if you're looking to become a doctor or a nurse, I would recommend you apply for science and for CTE. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. For world languages, okay, you're going to talk to Mrs. Bourne. ASL does count as a world language, but note this. If you are a native speaker in your house in two languages, you cannot use either one of those languages. For example, um, a few years ago, we had a scholar who at their home, they spoke English and German. They couldn't try out as the German studying scholar because they are bilingual. However, that scholar also knew Spanish, so they were trilingual. Okay, and so they knew three different languages. Now, were they very good at Spanish? Not as good as they were English or German, but they could still use Spanish. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry about that. Okay, so world language. Now, for computer tech, okay, you're going to talk to Mr. Savage. This is for like computer design, instruction, networking, robotics, stuff like that. For CTE, this is kind of the most broadest category. This is in career sciences, okay? So it's ag science, auto, carpentry, CAD, um, graphics, law enforcement, um, welding, but also filmmaking and related categories, okay? Also within here, you can put the medic, medical field, okay? You're gonna, with this one, they have asked that you create a short portfolio of some of your work, um, I assume this is going to be a lot of you because if you couldn't make the meeting, it's probably because you were at um, JTEC. Okay. So you're going to give these to Mrs. Jessic or to Mr. Crane. Okay. For family and consumer science, you're going to give this to Mrs. Gambles or to Miss Tibbetts. Okay. This is in child development, family living, food, nutrition, um, fashion, but also education. If you're looking to become a teacher, this is where you would go. Okay. Especially if it's an elementary teacher. Now for business, Great business department, talk to Mr. Willardson. For speech, theater, arts, and forensic, okay, this is if you are a debater on SLAM or if you are in theater, okay? Now, musical theater is different than dramatic theater. If you're in musical theater, you can apply for this one, but I would also uh, encourage you to also do vocal performance, okay? But this is um, for uh, drama and musical theater. You're going to give this to either Mr. Morell or to Coach Mac. And they do a, such a good job of collaborating. They're a really good team. And then for visual arts, you're gonna talk to Mrs. Lucas. For instrumental music, you're gonna talk to Mr. Matthews. For vocal performance, Mr. Taylor. And then for dance, Mrs. Folger. Okay, so these are the people that are actually gonna be a part of the selection process. I just give you the applications and then I work with the school winners. These are the people that are gonna be working with you. So if you have more questions, 
go see them. Okay, and, and if you need to re re rewind this to see their names, you can. Now, so what are the qualifications? To become a Sterling Scholar, there are four areas that we look at. Okay, scholarship. Now, scholarship is worth 50 points, but it's divided into two. You've got 25 points for the overall scholarship. Okay, this includes all of your grades, your ACT score, your GPA, um, the uh, level of classes you're taking, whether they're AP or they are concurrent. Okay, 25 points for that. And then you have 25 points for your category scholarship. Okay. Are you the best math student? Are you the best dancer? How many classes have you taken in history? Have you proven expertise in that? So some of you might be really, really good at art, but your GPA or your ACT score isn't very high. You might not receive full points for the overall scholarship, but your category scholarship might be amazing. Still apply. Okay. And then there's 25 points for leadership. Okay. And leadership is your involvement with clubs. In the school, it doesn't mean you have to be a part of a council, okay? You can be, so if you're the president of one club, put that as your leadership. But what if you're a member of like seven clubs, but you're not in any councils? That still shows leadership because you don't always have to lead from the front, okay? So leadership is basically your involvement in the school, but it also includes leadership outside of school, within the community or within your church organizations, okay? If you're a leader within church or like a 4-H leader club or something like that, um, that's outside the school, that also counts. But be aware of this. If it comes to a tie where there are two students who have equal levels of leadership, they're both like one is president of NHS and the other one is president of 4-H, tie goes to the school, okay? So just recognize we're, if, if a student is like, a leader of or like a secretary of NHS, but then you have the president of 4HS and they're super successful. The president of and of 4H is going to have more weight than uh, a secretary. But if it breaks the tie, tie goes to school. Now, citizenship is just a fancy word here for service. How involved are you in serving the community? Okay, they're looking for longevity, but also kind of depth of service. Okay. There, uh, if there's big projects, it used, it used to be that in years past, like parents would ensure their kids got a struggling scholar and they would take a trip to Africa or to Mexico or to um, some nation that um, the infrastructure isn't uh, very deep. And what would happen is they would volunteer and then they come here and basically the service was their parents bought it for them. Sterling Scholar has changed that to where they actually focus on leadership with or a service within the community that they live. Now, if you've gone to those foreign countries and you've done that service, that is amazing. Put that on there. Way to go. You're a hero. But just recognize they've trying to tried to level the 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 playing field. And as far as that, so uh, this scholarship, leadership, and service goes back to your ninth grade year. Okay. Don't include a service project that you did once you were 10, unless it's a project that you've been doing every year since you were 10. That's amazing. That is right there. 18 years of consecutive or eight years of consecutive service. That's amazing. So these are the different um, things that you are going to be judged. So for example, just uh, an example from last year, we had a student where their overall scholarship, not great. They were a 3.7 GPA and they had a 21 ACT, but they were one of the best leaders I've ever met and they were dedicated to service. They got a 25, a 25, and a 25, and then a 10 in overall scholarship. Really good. They made it to the state. Okay. They were almost a state champ. So don't be intimidated if your ACT score isn't super high. You can still do this. So here is basically what I just was talking about there. So here's the process. Come pick up an application. Okay. You can come see me after watching this or go to one of the department heads. They will also have an application. On the front is the cover sheet. Okay. And let's see if I have the cover sheet. Um, anyways, you'll show, I'll, I'll show you the cover sheet, but it basically says the name on there. Then you're going to need to write an essay on the prompt. Now the prompt is going to say the um, qualifications of a Sterling Scholar have been of scholarship, leadership, and citizenship have been exemplified in the way I live my life through. Eh, okay, now if I were you, here's how I would structure the essay. You've got your thesis. Super good. Your first paragraph is going to be about your overall expertise, what type of great student you are. The next paragraph is going to say, this is how awesome I am in my category. 
Then you're going to have a paragraph that's going to be about this is why I'm a great leader. And then you're going to have another paragraph that's going to say this is why I'm a great servant or a great citizen. That's how I would structure this. Um, uh, but it's really up to you how you do it. Now, a pitfall you do not want to fall into. Many students look at this essay and they make it a list. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. Don't do that. That's going to be your transcript. Instead, tell us a story. Write down an experience that you had as a leader. Okay. Then what you're going to do after you've done that is a train of transcript credits from the registrar. It does not need to be official. Okay. And the, tra uh, the registrar will give you those for free. You have to buy for official. Uh, uh, that you can, you have to pay for official ones, but if it's unofficial, just go ask them, they'll print it for you right there, no big deal. Please do that, and then also provide a resume, and I'm going to give you an example of what that resume might look like, okay? So, a resume should fit on one page, have your name, and then the address or the contact information. Put your email here so that the, the department heads can get a hold of you to schedule an interview. Then you're going to have your overall scholarship, Okay, you're going to have your content scholarship, you're going to have your leadership, and you're going to have your citizenship. Okay, and this is where your list is. Then, when you're writing your essay, pick one of these to write about. Okay, now, then what? Turn in the application to the appropriate department or chairperson, and that's the list I've given you. Then, what's going to happen is they're going to give you an interview. Okay, conduct an interview. That interview will be for 10 minutes. Now, if you are in any of the musics, both vocal and instrumental, dance, or if you are in speech or drama, they have asked that you prepare a short piece, okay, that you're going to demonstrate your expertise. Um, now, a question that always comes up is letters of recommendation. Do not get a letter of recommendation, okay? Um, in fact, I've, I've told the, the, the judges or department heads, don't even read those letters of application, okay? And then after your interview, just wait patiently for the announcement assembly. Now, these are also important notes. The department heads may ask for additional work. Talk to them before you submit the application. Also, do not prepare an entire portfolio. Some of you might have friends or siblings that were a Sterling Scholar and you know the amount of work. Don't do the whole thing. Also, don't miss deadlines. No late applications will be accepted, period. Also, recognize I, Mr. Jensen, do not make the selection. Mr. Beasy does, okay? However, this is what we are asking, is if you apply for more than one, please bring me as soon as you can your list of priorities. So if you're gonna apply for three different categories, let's say you're the number one choice in all three categories. There's a tie. You will be the one to break the tie by telling us what your priority is, okay? And you just bring that list. I never show it to anyone except for Mr. Vizi if he asks for it, okay? Now, the important dates, and this is what you need to look at. Number one, first, the information meeting. These applications were nothing, none of this was revealed prior to the 23rd, okay? Now, on October 9th, that's the major date for you applications are due to the department heads at 3 p.m. on October 9th, okay? Then from October 12th, and I've actually talked to some department heads, we're going to extend this to October 27th to be after fall break if needed. They will be conducting interviews, okay? Then on October 30th, which is a Friday, we're going to have some type of party. It might be lunch. It might not. This whole COVID is going to throw some things off potentially, but I'm going to announce to you, the applicants, who the winners are, and then ask you not to tell anyone else, okay? The reason we do that before is because on November 3rd, we're going to have the Sterling Scholar Announcement Assembly, and we would like to invite your parents of the winners to participate and come and be a part of that announcement assembly. And then right afterwards, we're gonna have a meeting with all the parents. OK, um, in the years past, we've had parents like take days off of work and then they show up and their kid didn't want. And we always felt felt bad about that. And um, so just be aware of that announcement assembly and all of you are invited to that assembly. Okay? So with that, if you have any questions, please email me, kyle.jensen at jordandistruct.org or feel free to go ahead and come see me. But good luck and you're wonderful. Go Grizzlies.